Yeah, uh, we can go right to questions if that's okay, Chris. Sure thing. Mark Brennan, quite on seat. Hi, James. How are you today? Hey, Mark. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. Is there anything you could share with us about Cam Sullivan Brown and why he didn't play and if he'll play this week? And what could you tell us about him as a receiver? We haven't seen an awful lot of him. Yeah, so uh, what I can tell you is that it wasn't COVID related, um, but he did have an issue that, uh, you know, that you know, put him in a situation where he wasn't able to obviously not only start but not play last week. So uh, we'll, we'll see where he's at this week. But, um, you know, he's a guy who's worked really hard. Obviously, he's put his time in. Um, he has had, you know, been a guy that in his past, he's just, he's kind of had uh, a history of, you know, injuries that have set him back. And as, as you know, uh, we don't talk about those a whole lot. Um, but, um, you know, he really has had a great off season. There was kind of a buzz going on about him. Um, you know, when you talk to the guys in the summer, you know, he had really had a, a strong summer. So, um, you know, earn, earn that starting position where, and was excited about what he was going to do. And then during the week, you know, we had an issue and, uh, and he wasn't able to go. So, uh, you know, you're talking about a veteran. Uh, you're talking about a guy who's been around. Um, you know, obviously the adversity he's been through and the time he's been here, you got a mature guy been in a bunch of different settings before um, and it earned the opportunity to get on the field. So looking forward to seeing uh, you know, what he's able to do. Audrey Snyder. Good evening, James. Uh, hey, wanted Audrey. to ask you, hello, I wanted to ask you about Keaton Ellis. Um, where is he at with, with his development? I mean, we've asked you so much about Joey Porter, but how does Keaton still kind of factor in back there? Yeah, he's, he's doing really well. Uh, we're, we're big fans of Keaton. You know, obviously, as a true freshman, did some really nice things, and, and we still feel that way. Um, you know, Joey, Joey just had a, you know, for whatever reason, the, the light really just kind of came on for him and had a really, really good, uh, you know, summer and, and camp and, and uh, you know, did the same thing on Saturday. We thought he played well on Saturday. So, you know, I think that's a really competitive room. We feel the same way about Marquise. You know, we really got a good group there, and they continue to develop and, and compete. Ben Jones? James, how's it going? Um, hey, Ben. Losing and having an emotional game this weekend, however that goes, and then having the election early next week, I realize that you're focused on the weekend right now, but just as a whole, from the management of emotions and everything, I mean, how do you kind of navigate what is inevitably, no matter how everything goes, is going to be, you know, seven days of a lot of different things? Yeah, to be honest with you, that's, you know, been a little bit 2020 for everybody, right? You know, it's uh, been a lot of things to manage um, other than school and, and football. There have been a lot of other things going on, you know, in our country. There have been a lot of other things going on in our communities, uh, you got health issues, um, and that, and that, you know, obviously we're not even talking about personal issues that that people are dealing with. Um, so it's just been a lot of things going on, a lot of hot topics, a lot of things in our country, a lot of things that could be distractions. You know, we talked about that all, all, uh, you know, all preseason. That, you know, the most disciplined teams and the teams that were going to be willing to sacrifice were going to have an advantage over the teams that didn't, um, but. For, for every program in the country, there's been a lot of things to, to manage. You know, you got opt-outs, you know, you got COVID. Um, again, you got some of the things going on, you know, in our country from a protest, uh, from social issues, you know, uh, a lot of things. So I, I think your point is a good one. You got the election coming up. It's just a lot of things. And you know, what I hope, I hope that football is a little bit of a safe haven for our guys that they're able to kind of step away from all those things and step on the field and, and focus. But it's just been very different. I, I think one of the biggest challenges for me is my leadership style is very, um, you know, in your face, is very relational. Uh, I'm a hugger. I'm a high fiver. I'm, I'm that type of guy. And a big part of that uh, we haven't been able to do. You know, uh, we usually take the guys to champs or bowling alleys and have fun with them. It's it's very different. It's been a very different style and very different approach to how we do things. And 
And I think the other thing is we're not perfect, but we're taking all these COVID precautions very serious uh, here. And um, it's just been very different. You know, Rashid Walker comes up to me every single practice asking to take the mask off because his visor is just fogged up the entire practice. Um, and it drives him crazy. And he has a different reason every day on why we should take him off. So, you know, just as you know, Ben, just a bunch of different things, you know, going on there. Those are a few examples. She said, Tyler Donahue, I can hear her back there talking. I, I, not I, not I, on the mic. I got you. Uh, thanks, James, uh, for the heads up there. I uh, hope you're doing well tonight. You too. Uh, Lance Dixon's going to, I would presume, make, uh, make his starting debut uh, or play extensively at the very least uh, in, in a very bright light situation. What did you see from him in, in week one? And going back to bringing him on campus last year, what gives you confidence that Lance Dixon is ready for this moment? Well, he, he's obviously a very talented guy. And uh, I'm really proud of Lance. He's grown in, in so many different ways. And you know, um, I think a lot of the specific technical fundamental things of uh, uh, playing linebacker and, um, you know, all the different looks that you have to defend with the offenses that we see and, and what we're asking him to do on defense. You know, I think he just continues to grow and, and build confidence and transitions from a really athletic high school player to, to a big time you know, college linebacker. And I, I see him getting better every single day. Um, you know, a lot of those young guys that we've recruited are, are, are in similar, uh, similar phases. And I think that's the hard part. I think, you know, um, everybody wants it to happen like yesterday. Uh, and there's an evolution and there's not a whole lot of patience left, uh, you know, in, in our society. Um, but I think, I think, you know, these guys, you know, Lance is a really good example of that. Uh, these young players that I think are going to be really, really good players, and we need it to. We need it to happen yesterday, um, but but I, I'm really pleased with his with his uh, you know maturation and and how he's evolved. Nick Fiera. Yeah, hi, uh, James. Uh, thank hey. you for doing this. Um, I, my question is about Jahan Dotson, and uh, I spoke to him earlier today. Uh, he, about leadership, and he was saying he's he's not really the vocal type. But what what do you expect from him being uh, with with a, a receiver of his experience, and uh, how can he rub off on the younger guys? And what are your expectations of him just in general this year? Yeah, we need him to be you know kind of our guy. You know, you look every year we've had you know a guy. You know, whether it's KJ or whether it's Godson, you know, uh, or whoever uh, Godwin, whoever it is, we just we seem to you know always have one of those guys that. Um, is kind of the focal point in the passing game, and, and most people do. And and, and you know, Jahan is is that guy for us right now. And you know, we need those other guys to continue to to develop and step up. But but Jahan and Pat need to need to be those guys for us. Um, you know, you're right. You know, in terms of being a vocal leader, I think Jahan's said about you know about 23 words since he's been here. Uh, but he usually has a smile on his face and just a good way about him. And, you know, he's another guy that's grown, uh, you know, uh, in, in so many ways, you know, academically, uh, socially, as a football player in the weight room. I'm, I'm really, really proud of him. I got a very close relationship with his family. I know they're super proud of him as well. Um, you know, I, I think I was giving him a hard time the other day about the recruiting process, because uh, he was a challenging recruit. I don't know if you guys remember, he was committed to UCLA. And uh, you know, we talked about that a little bit. I was giving him a hard time at practice about this, that the other day. But, but I'm, I'm super proud of, of Jahan, you know. Uh, you know obviously, a, uh, a local kid who's you know, really come here and, and just really grown and matured in, in, in so many areas. And I think he's got a really, really bright future in the rest of his Penn State career and afterwards as well. Hey, Coach, thanks a lot for the time this evening. Appreciate it. Hey, you too, Parth. Um, Jason Owe is a guy, you know, third year in the program, uh, kind of came in with these sky-high expectations, uh, almost unfair, you know, in a way. Um, it seems like he finally has that opportunity to, you know, capture some of those goals this year. How has he kind of handled that roller coaster of, you know, having, um, I guess, such lofty expectations placed on him when he first got to Penn State? 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I guess I kind of look at it different, uh, Parth. I think he's like a lot of the guys that we recruited that are that are highly recruited guys, and and I think that happens in a lot of programs where you know you come in and you know you got to learn. You know, he was a great athlete and had only played football for a couple of years, so there's still a lot to learn. And you know, he came in and and um, you know got better and. Uh, you know, improved his his uh, fundamentals and technique and his football IQ. And you know, last year, obviously, obviously showed some flashes. And now this year is really starting to put it all together. So, you know, I, I think his process is a lot like a lot of guys. Um, you know, they come in and and although they're great athletes, there's still a lot to learn, and especially when you're talking about D lineman and O lineman, where it's such a physical game up front. Um, you know, his high school program did a tremendous job getting him prepared and ready, but obviously uh, there's a big difference, you know, between what he faced in high school and in the Big Ten. But uh, he's done a great job. He's practicing so much different right now this year than, than at any point before. Uh, the battles between our offensive tackles and DNs has been, has been you know, really fun to watch. And I think him and Shock are feeding really, you know, off of off of each other. And I also think they're setting a really good example, you know, for the Adisa Isaacs and the Nick Tarburtons and uh, Smith Bilberts of the world. Uh, you know, that those those next those next you know group of guys, you know, and then obviously a guy like Shane Simmons, who we're fortunate to have as a veteran guy in the program as well. So, um, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy for him and proud of him. I think he's going to have a big game on Saturday, and we need him. To. We have time for a couple more questions. We'll start with uh, Thomas Frankar. Hey James, how are you doing tonight? Thomas Frankar got the full name in there. I love it. Yeah, we're going official tonight. I like that. Um, we've talked a lot about your running backs, uh, obviously, the last couple of days um, from last weekend. But obviously, everything starts up front. How do you feel that your offensive line being the first game, and what are some of the challenges facing uh, the Ohio State front coming up on Saturday? Yeah, I thought overall we we protected pretty good. Um, I think at times we were you know we were good in the run game, but there was times where I thought we you know could have been a little bit more detailed and got a little bit more push. And obviously, we're going to be facing a, a really talented front um, on on Saturday that we're very familiar with. So. I expect us to take the next step. Um, you know, we're going to need to. And uh, I know Coach Troutwine and all those guys are really working hard. And, uh, you know, we, we need to take advantage of this opportunity. we got a tremendous opportunity on Saturday. And uh, I think to your point, Thomas, it, it starts up front with our, with our O-line and our D-line. And I think as, as we know, um, you know, these games against Ohio State, although there's tremendous skill all over the field, um, a lot of these games have been dictated by the fronts. We will now go to Elton Hayes. Good evening, James. Hope you're doing well. You too, Elton. Hey, uh, this, uh, earlier today, Coach, we had a chance to speak with uh, Chris Stoll. He told us about receiving his scholarship and just his experiences with the program. I wanted to speak with you and just find out what it's been like to coach him and what does his work ethic and, uh, I guess, dedication, you know, what, what example does that set for his teammates? Yeah, he's, he's, been a, he's been a great story here. We've had a bunch of good examples of guys like Chris that have come in and, you know, worked really hard and, and, you know, not only earned a role on the team, but also earned a scholarship. You know, he's changed his body dramatically. You know, I don't know if he told you how big he was in, in high school as a, I think he played offensive line as well in high school. Uh, came to camp, did some good things in our in our evaluation camps, and um, and then just kind of kept chipping away at it in the weight room. Uh, academically, he's done really well socially, and then you know he was really doing a nice job. But when Coach Lord got here, I think Coach Lord kind of set up a very specific plan for him and and what and what we wanted from him, and 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 he really embraced it. I thought last year he did a really nice job and you know we were hoping to be able to give him a scholarship but the scholarship became available as soon as it did you know he he earned it you know he really did so um you know I, I'm proud of him I think those stories for college football and and for individual teams like Penn State I think it's important you know obviously not every kid that that joins the program as a, as a run on is going to earn a scholarship 
Um, but I think it's, I think it's really healthy for your program when it does happen. Um, and, and he's earned it, you know, he, it's not like, you know, sometimes you have scholarships available and you, and you, you may give one away at the end. Um, but, but he's earned it. He's a starter, he's a contributor and, and has done a fantastic job for us. So I, I'm, I'm really proud of him. That's all the time we have for coach today. Appreciate everybody joining us.